Hi everybody, welcome to another Carrie Wright Silk Coffee Break. These little Carrie Wright Silk sleep masks, these really came about because I had pieces of fabric that were still large enough that you, you certainly wouldn't call it a scrap. Thought it might be fun today to show you how they're made. As you can see, this is extremely thin. We all tend to think that puffy things are soft and plush and luxurious, and so I understand wanting a puffy sleep mask. Since I don't want a big puffy thing, I, I kind of set out on a mission to figure out how to do this. So we're gonna go ahead and jump right in and I'm gonna show you how this is made. I got some feedback from someone who was a friend who purchased one of them who said that there was just a little bit of light coming through the nose. Went ahead and cut my pattern just a little bit higher in the nose area and broadened out here at the bottom at the cheek area. You really get great coverage but it's still coming up high enough on the nose that it doesn't stick out here. The first thing I do, cut out blackout fabric. This is for curtains, 10 and a half by four and a half inches in a rectangle. The next layer that is inside is this extremely thin, just plain white craft felt. And it also provides a very nice, soft backing for my hand painted silk and then I'm choosing a coordinating silk back, this part of the sleep mask. And then next to that back section is this really nice cotton, very thin batting. And the reason the batting is in there is to give some structure and softness to the area that's going to sit against your face, against your eyes. This is a little bit spongier and a little bit more forgiving. You would never know until you put it on that it's actually blackout fabric that's inside of there. And I've come up with a measurement on the elastic and on the band that I think will work with any head size, but be incredibly comfortable. This is getting cut at 17 inches times an inch and a half. It gets folded in half stitched all the way down the edge with a quarter of an inch seam. And then with this handy little tool, if you're a seamstress, you'll know what this is. With this handy little turn tool, it hooks into one end and I'm able to just pull that fabric inside out so that now I have my little tube. And I'm gonna hold on to my 3 8 inch swimsuit elastic is what this is called. So I'm hooking that into my elastic. I'm working the end of the satin over the top of the elastic. And then I can just very gently and slowly pull this through. And I'm doing it slowly so that I, I don't pull it all the way through because the elastic is shorter in order to create the gathered effect, the elastic is shorter than the satin. And it's that simple. Once all of my bands are stitched up, I do that in a batch, and then I come back and I start batching together my sleep mask pieces. I'm gonna lay my blackout fabric down, put my pattern down on top of it, and with a pencil, I just quickly, roughly trace all the way around that pattern because that's going to become my stitching line. I'm gonna turn the pattern so that the writing is on the, the bottom, and then I start layering on my felt piece, whatever is going to be the front of the sleep mask, and then I'm adding on my little elastic band. Next, it's right sides together. So this is the right side of what's going to be the back of my sleep mask. I want the shiny side to be, when it's finished, I want that to be facing my face. So I'm gonna put that right side against the front of the sleep mask. And then I'm going to add its layer of cotton batting. This gets pinned with not a lot of pins. I use three or four at the top and three or four at the bottom and just one at the sides to kind of flatten that out. And I start stitching just inside that pattern line that I drew all the way around, leaving an opening at the top so that when I'm done stitching, this is what it looks like. 
the, the thing that I do first is to very quickly go around the outside edge and cut away with about a quarter of an inch left all the way around the outside just to get the bulk off. I go back in with my scissors and very, very carefully trim all the way up to the stitches on this blackout fabric. And then I go back in after that and trim this in the same manner I trim that felt layer. This is all trimmed down and clean. I still have my quarter inch of batting and my quarter inch of fabric all the way around. And this is ready to turn inside out. I start with one end of it just gently. It probably doesn't look gentle, but I'm being very gentle to kind of shove that end through. And you can see it's starting to come alive. This just needs a good, gentle pressing all the way around. And I kind of work around the edge and very gently press so that that seam rolls down and the front is on the front and the back is on the back. And then up at the top, I press the opening and hand stitch that little opening closed. And you can kind of see that there are some hand stitches up here. Hopefully my stitching is clean enough that when you see your sleep mask, you don't even really notice that. And that, folks, is how the Carrie Wright Silk Sleep Mask is constructed. I really do want to find ways to offer little under $50 gift items, and I think this sleep mask is, is a pretty fancy, pretty special thing. Every single one of them is gonna be a complete one of a kind because I'm making them out of pieces of material from hand-painted items that I've made. So you're never gonna have any two that are alike, and maybe that'll be special to someone. It's special to me to offer them, so. Please make sure that you like and subscribe Carrie Wright Silk and hit the bell so that you get notified when I put new videos up. And remember, there really is always a reason to have hope. Take care.